Let's talk about the world of live shopping because the deeper you go, the crazier it gets. I always give you some gifts. So you don't miss out because now is your time. This is not your mom's QVC channel anymore, where sellers would have an allotted TV slot and you call in to make an order. No, 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 this is something different. This is something that could only happen in the here and now where so many of us have the internet at our very fingertips, where we have waning attention spans and a growing infrastructure that is set up to make live shopping as addicting as possible. Live shopping has become an especially powerful and bizarre force in China, where we see buildings set up for the sole purpose of live streamers selling in their individual cubicles, where there are boot camps to train people on how to be live shopping streamers, and where millions of products can be sold by doing this. But how did we get here? What's the problem with this fascinating yet terrifying world of live shopping? And how can we each protect ourselves from getting sucked into its craziness? Let's talk about all of that and more in this video. Plus, let's talk about one of the craziest things that was sold on a live shopping stream. And you can put your guess in now, and I promise you, you're gonna get it wrong. I mean, you might, I don't, I don't know. But before that, if you are new here, hi, I'm Kara, and I make videos on the intersection of money, media, and intentional living. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, be sure to subscribe. And if you like this video essay, you might also like my video, The Terrifying World of Timu, or Let's Talk Hall Culture, both of which discuss social media trends, overspending, and sometimes just straight up hoarding. And one thing we'll talk about later is the way that credit card debt ties into these trends that encourage overspending. But the tricky thing when it comes to understanding a lot of these economic issues is that articles will tend to sensationalize things or spin things so that you click on them. It can make us feel more panicked or not give us the full picture on an issue, which is why I'm excited to share today's sponsor, Ground News, with all of you. Because Ground News is a platform that makes it easy to compare news sources and better recognize media bias, a skill that I think is so important for good media literacy. So take the topic of credit card debt. There are lots of articles on this topic, and what Ground News does is they aggregate the relevant articles while sharing coverage details and bias distribution. AKA, how many publications are talking about this topic? And do they lean left? Do they lean right or more center? And what level of factuality do they really have? You can also compare headlines through Ground News, which lets you see how different sides might be framing the same topic. I think Ground News can be super helpful if you're researching different financial and economic topics for yourself. And also, in the US at least, it is an election year. And so I think something like Ground News is really, really helpful if you're trying to navigate the different political landscape and different headlines that are going to be coming out this year. If you're interested in Ground News, head to ground.news slash Kara and subscribe for less than $1 a month or get 40% off their unlimited access vantage plan this month only. And thank you so much to Ground News for sponsoring today's video. So first, how and where did live shopping begin? In many ways, the live shopping that we are talking about today is unprecedented, but also in many ways, we have seen this trend time and time again. Even before the mammoths that are the home shopping network and QVC took hold of pop culture in the 1980s, selling live was nothing new. Throughout history, marketplaces have been a central hub for buying and selling things, from foods to clothes to drugs. For centuries, if not millennia, we've seen sellers demonstrating their products and interacting live with potential customers. We've seen auctions take place where people who talk a mile a minute go up and sell like crazy. Side note, how do you think auction people realize that that is something they are really good at? Is that something that you're just born good at? Or is that something that you practice every single day late into the night? Either way, lie shopping is nothing new. It seems to be something that we as humans have a knack for and a love for. And so it makes sense and it's no surprise that it's so popular nowadays in the social media age. According to Influencer Marketing Hub, live shopping looks like it won't be slowing down anytime soon. As it explains, live streams get people to buy things more often, up to 10 times more than other methods like normal online ads. Influencer Marketing Hub also mentions that, quote, experts predict that the live shopping industry in the United States will be worth $35 billion by 2024. In China, on the other hand, live stream shopping already plays a huge part in the country's social shopping culture. In fact, 45% of China's online shoppers were expected to purchase via live stream in 2023. China is actually a wildly fascinating example 
example of what live shopping can really look like. Online live shopping has been popular in China for much longer and much stronger than most other countries, and it shows. Like I mentioned before, there are boot camps to train you to become live shopping streamers, rentable live streaming studios, predatory contracts that lock people into live shopping streams for years, and even virtual avatars that sell companies' products instead of real human beings. Because you know, why deal with a human influencer when you could deal with a virtual one? I swear no one's jobs are safe. They're coming for me. And if all this sounds very Black Mirror episode to you, I totally get it. It is a crazy thing to see, especially because the products that are being sold on these live streams, they're not just the cleaning products and clothes that we used to see back in the QVC days. It's the only mop that you're ever gonna buy, the best mop you're ever gonna use, it is lightweight and durable, and that is just me speaking from my experience. There are crab farmers selling their crabs through live shopping, supplement companies hiring streamers to peddle fiber pills, and even a multi-million dollar rocket was sold on a live stream. And no, I'm not talking a raccoon named Rocket, but a launch into the atmosphere kind of rocket. In 2020, the opportunity to launch a commercial rocket sold for $5.6 million, and it was sold by a woman named Via, also known as China's live streaming queen. More than 2 million people tuned in to watch that rocket get sold through live shopping. And this is a great example of how shopping can be seen as a form of entertainment. For generations, wealthy classes were the primary ones to use shopping as a form of entertainment, spending time at expensive boutiques or commissioning grand portraits of themselves, but over the years, things have gotten cheaper and the average person has gotten richer, meaning more and more of us can shop for entertainment. About five years ago, I realized I did this myself using shopping as a form of entertainment, and I've since tried to die that down, but it used to be if my friends and I wanna hang out, something like going to Target or going to TJ Maxx was a top pick for us. And over time, we spent so much money on things we didn't really need or use, all because it was something to do. Now, some of this ties into our desperate need in the United States for third spaces, a topic I really want to cover in a future video. But it's also because shopping is a relatively passive activity, making it easy to slide into and get comfortable, kind of like scrolling on the internet, something I still haven't stamped out of my life quite yet. It's no surprise then that the combination of scrolling and shopping has made such an addictive mix in the form of live shopping. The interactivity feeds into our propensity for parasocial relationships. If we like a certain live shopping streamer, we may want to buy from them, whether it's because of trust or aspiration. And honestly, it's just stimulating. Like it's something that our monkey brains love. Many streams feature lots of texts, shouts, fast talking, outfit try-ons, music. It's a full on candy store for our brains. Speaking of which, you know how it feels like all of our attention spans are just shrinking as we scroll more and more? That seems to be the secret sauce for this one live shopping streamer whose clip I showed earlier. Shaba. Shaba. This streamer, who has 531 million followers on the Chinese version of TikTok called Douyin, shows products for less than three seconds each. And in just one week, she sold $13.7 million in goods doing this. Now, that was last fall, and since then, Douyin added a rule preventing live sellers from selling products with little information during live streams, so sadly, an end to an era. Even so, a great example of live shopping as entertainment, because I don't know about you, but watching her move like that, it's mesmerizing. And as evidenced by this crazy speed selling, live shopping's magic isn't just in getting people to tune in, but also to buy. And I think that the driving force behind these purchases is impulse shopping. As this Nature article succinctly puts it, quote, innovation has made shopping effortless, and consequently, unplanned buying has become even more enjoyable. But what is the problem with any of this? So what, we like some instant gratification and dopamine hits. You only live once and there are some cool products on live shopping. What's the big deal? And to that I say, I don't think that live shopping is inherently bad. Maybe you didn't expect me to say that, maybe you've seen my videos before, so it's not that big of a surprise that that's my stance, but that is how I feel. See, I think it makes perfect sense that selling and shopping have evolved over time. Technology has transformed tons of things, from how we grow food, to how we send messages, to how we build a business, and there's a lot of good that can come out of live shopping. Like, I think that a lot of small businesses have a ton more visibility and access to a wide audience because of something like this. I mean, there's a 
whole Jennifer Lawrence movie dedicated to how hard a woman had to work for her product to be featured on QVC back in the day. Imagine if she just had access to TikTok Live. To me, that is a super cool thing to come out of this. And who knows, maybe you're gonna catch me selling my budget spreadsheets on TikTok Live someday. And I think it's great that we as consumers have more ways to discover products we might want. Cause back when I was growing up, we only found cool stuff in Sky Mall. It's true. But despite the benefits of a more connected marketplace, the way live shopping primes us for impulse purchases can be really harmful to us as individuals, not to mention our society. If we shop for entertainment so that we can feel that hit of excitement, then we can find ourselves quickly falling into an endless chase for fulfillment. And in my opinion, that kind of chase is a slippery slope to financial problems like credit card debt, a monster of a financial predicament I don't recommend anyone fall into. So quick financial tangent, credit card interest rates are notorious notoriously predatory, meaning they just want to suck as much money as they can from you. The average retail credit card interest rate is a whopping 28.93% as of 2023, according to Bankrate. That, my friends, is huge. That is loan shark territory. For perspective, if you invested in the S&P 500, the average annual growth for that is around 10%, and a good high-yield savings account is around 4% growth. If you put your money into either of those, hey, even if you were somehow able to combine their growth rates, the potential returns would still pale in comparison to the money being eaten away by the predatory credit card debt. That's why a lot of financial experts recommend throwing your money towards high-interest debt before you start investing. But remember, not all debt is created equal, so things like a mortgage for a house is a very different kind of debt than credit card debt, but credit card debt when you're dealing with crazy near 30% interest rates is an awful thing to carry around. It can keep you from hitting many of your financial goals, from building an emergency fund to saving for retirement. But you might be thinking, Kara, you're being way too paranoid right now. Just because live shopping exists doesn't mean we're all going to fall into credit card debt. And you know what? You're probably right. I hope my spiel did not come across as too paranoid or alarmist. For one, some lower income folks may use credit card debt to just pay for the bare necessities like groceries. And according to CNBC, quote, of those with credit card debt, 43% say they carry a balance because of an unexpected or emergency expense, most commonly medical bills or car and home repairs. Now, ideally emergencies are paid for through your emergency fund. That is why having an emergency fund is so important to build and is one of the first steps you should take whenever building a good financial future for yourself, but for those who don't have an emergency fund for whatever reason, they might instead turn to credit cards. So to be clear, it is not just impulse shopping that is making up people's credit card debt. But at the same time, I do think it's worth highlighting that there is a real risk to impulse shopping getting easier and easier as technology evolves with things like live shopping. I don't think shopping or consumption is some inherent enemy. Like I've said before, I'm not anti-consumption. I think it's a vital part of existing and specifically conscious consumption can be very positive. But when consumption or shopping in this case puts us in a more dire financial situation, it's not good for us and not good for the economy either, since I know some people will argue that. The economy is better off if our money goes to things that align with our values, that we don't feel regret around or that lead us to just handing over our wealth to credit card interest. So what do we do in this world where live shopping is becoming an increasingly powerful force? In case you didn't see, Amazon even has a crazy live shopping meets YouTube type of platform these days where things like a gender reveal video is also a live shopping video. So what do we do? On an individual level, I think there are a few things that we can do. One of which is to identify our triggers. This means thinking about what has historically sparked our decision to start impulse shopping. Is it when we're stressed or feeling down? Is it when you're on your phone at night when you should be sleeping? Or maybe it's any time you get a notification that your favorite influencer is doing a live shopping stream. From from there, you can start trying to avoid your triggers. Maybe you stop yourself from opening Amazon when you're feeling stressed, or you unfollow any tempting accounts, whether it's from brands, celebrities, influencers, or even mute your friends if their posts trigger you. And lastly, practice rejecting instant gratification. One of the most powerful things about live shopping is its sense of urgency. You're seeing something happening right now, and it can feel like this is your one opportunity to buy something off of the stream. The e-bike timer is almost done. $90 off on the e-bike you're seeing right behind you comes with a headlight. But if something really catches your eye, 
wait a little. Put it in your cart or save the link in your phone notes and then wait at least 24 hours to see how you feel about it. There's a good chance that the excitement will have passed by then and you'll realize that you don't really want or need that item. Or if you do decide you still wanna buy it, you'll be able to do it with fewer regrets and more intention. Live shopping is indeed a crazy world that might only be getting crazier, but it's one that I think we can prepare ourselves to navigate with the right tools. But what do you think? Have you ever watched one of these live shopping streams or maybe even bought something from there? Do you feel like it's the next big thing or not really? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and what topics you'd like to see me cover next. Thank you so much to my patrons on Patreon for supporting this channel and those who donate on Buy Me A Coffee. I appreciate you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.